Hello and welcome to another episode of Spectrum Drama, where we take a look at the hottest posts on Spectrum for the week and give our thoughts on them. Let's dive in. So first up we've got a post from Nash and he says, Rifles, LMGs, SMGs, etc. need an effective range rebalance. Um, so the post is quite long and there's a lot of detail in it, um, basically just showing that the weapons currently in game were clearly kind of designed more for the um, first person shooter side of the game rather than this kind of open world aspect, um, which it basically means that they've got a very, very short range in comparison to kind of their real world equivalents. Um, some of the examples, for example, um, is you've got a rifle in game, which is the scalpel um, and has an effective range of 120 meters. The real world equivalent would be around between say 500 and 800 meters. So there's a massive um, sort of loss there for the guns in game, which is gonna cause problems, I think, for um, you know open world shooting. So what, what do you think on this? Um, well, yeah. We know the effective ranges are quite small. When we did our weapon reviews, we, we found out that, well, when we test the sniper rifle, I think the effective range was around 200 meters, I believe. Yeah. He's putting it down to 100 meters now. I don't know if that's changed in a patch at some point. Uh, a lot of these little tweaks that they do don't really get advertised to the community, which is a yeah. bit of a problem. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, we're going to need more ranges like that if we're shooting people on planets or moons. Yeah. If you, if you let's say you're going to, um, I don't know, ambush someone at their ship um, using a sniper rifle, you're not exactly going to be, um, at, you know, like an effective range for a sniper rifle at like 100 metres. It just seems weird. They could dash that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Although I think maybe the ranges that he's using are kind of what have been put on paper at some point, but maybe they aren't necessarily real world. Um, you know, we, we've tested them and we've, we've definitely got better range out of them, but uh, maybe a retest is in order, who knows? Um, maybe a retest. Yeah, we do need to do some reviews for the scalpel and uh, a couple of new rifles that come out. Yeah. That's definite. Uh, we've got some basic stats for them now, so we'll have a look at doing uh, reviews for those. Yeah, definitely. I think they, they, they really will need to have a rethink though um, sooner rather than later as well as you know as people are going to start um, doing more first person type stuff uh, shooting in world um, you're definitely going to need better ranges than that I mean it's going to be a really boring fight if you're well I mean no it'd be quite an exciting fight to be honest if you have to be within like 25 30 meters of someone but um, yeah but yeah I think um, definitely need to have a rethink Okay, so next up we've got a post from I Rock, and uh, he or she says, uh, petition to have an option to remove these. Um, and the images are of the MFD screens, basically, um, to, to remove certain screens or displays uh, from view, because, I mean, sometimes they're unnecessary. A lot of the times you do need them all, but sometimes it would be nice to minimize the, uh, the, the display a little bit. Um, but um, yeah, that would be a dream, I think, for him. So, uh, what, what, what's, what's your yeah. thoughts on this? I mean, I'm with him on the first one. Uh, the first picture's got the uh, the ship um, HUD element at the yeah. top corner, and the target one. I yeah, I kind of agree with him on that one. Uh, I do find they get in the way. A lot of people like that information in their face, but um, to be honest, when I'm in the dogfight. Do I look at it? Yeah. No. No. So you might as well get rid of it. Yeah. Maybe occasionally you might check your shields. But I mean, you could easily hotkey that so that it's toggle on, toggle off. You know what I mean? So um, the minute you're getting into a fight, toggle it on. You know, the minute you're done, toggle it off to be able to have a better view. You know. Yeah. But even if you look at that screenshot he's taken there, um, that same information is on the bottom right MFD. Yeah, it's true. So it, it, there's no need for it to be up in the top corner as well. Yeah. Yeah, it does make sense. I mean, you know, you, there, there are people kind of making their points in the, the comments, you know, that 
if you're in a dogfight, you need every bit of information. But to be honest, the majority of the real information you need is, are oh, my shields fucked beyond repair? Um, and um, who's around me? That's kind of the things you need to see at a glance. Yeah. Um, and is my target dead yet? Exactly, yeah. Everything else really is gravy. You don't, you don't need it, but it's useful to have. I think it would be nice if there was an option, yeah, to turn that off. And also if there was an option, like if all the ships had the ability to have kind of fold away panels. So if you wanted to have a real clean area to just sit and not have to look at stuff, you could fold them away. Um, but I mean, that's not essential. But yeah, I think I agree. Uh, I think that would be nice to be able to just turn them off and have a nice clean display there. Well, your fold away panel uh, idea was actually um, shown in the first concept video for the game, I think. Yeah. Um, I think the guy was sitting in a hornet or something and then a, a panel comes out to the side and sort of comes into his vision yeah, and then sort of goes away again. Maybe they'll look at that a long time in the future, but who knows? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if, if we have to choose between, you know, sort of uh, having professions working and stuff like that or some displays in my way, I'll, I'll, I'll have some professions and deal with the displays. Um, you know, it's... Yeah. Um, <clears throat> not essential but yeah I, I i think that would be cool if they could look at it down the road and just say yeah maybe make these a little bit more customizable for the actual um pilot as well i mean obviously you get into a 747 the unlike it's unlikely you're going to get to go well i demand to move that button there you know but um yeah it, but yeah if you're buying a ship and you you, you should yeah i think you should be able to customize it that would be really cool So next up, we've got a post from Dave Wizard, who says, Tedium versus catering to RP nerds. And this is going to be my um, rant for the day. Um, but I'll give you the brief synopsis of what's gone on. So he's moaning about quantum travel and how long it takes to get to Hurston, for example. Um, and the, the fact that this is supposed to be entertainment and he doesn't want to have to sit there for you know four minutes doing nothing while his ship flies somewhere um that's the first point the second point is about um what happens what happened to max speed where uh, then decouple and drift now they throttle you back down to your scm speed um which means you have to kind of hold the afterburner button to get anywhere um that i agree with but we'll, we'll touch on that in a bit um, and then he has a moan about, you know, his friend plays a, I don't know, a flight simulator game and flies for 13 hours, which he thinks is moronic. Well, dude, some people enjoy that stuff. Some people don't, you know, some people yeah. are RP nerds, um, you know, <laughs> we're RP nerds, but you know, <laughs> go on, you start. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to calm myself down for a minute. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, fair enough. He might not, you know, enjoy flying a seven four seven for thirteen hours in a simulator. Fair play. I wouldn't like that. But then, uh, you know, people like different things. Some people play FIFA. Yeah, what's that about? What's that about? <laughs> you know, it must be popular because they keep yeah. making one every year. So each to their own, mate. No, no point going off on one about it. Mm. Um, as for the travel times, yeah, I mean, this comes up pretty much every week in Spectrum. It's, it's getting a bit long now. Yeah. People are just moaning because it takes average, what, 12 minutes to fly from Port Olisar to Hurston. Yeah. Now, you're not really meant to be doing that two or three times every game session. It's, um, it's not going to happen. No. The idea is that there will be missions in the area you're in, so you don't have to do that all the time. But it's beneficial to people that want to transport um, sort of cargo for selling and trade runs. Mm. Um, again, some people want to do that, just because this guy doesn't. I don't know why he's throwing his toys out of the pram. Yeah. I mean, I, I can understand, you know, it's... It's different if you're not used to playing a game where you might have to wait for things to happen rather than it being a you know immediate gratification um <clears throat> then fair enough but you know the, the fact that you have to see, even if you have to sit there for five minutes or six minutes um you know it's a spaceship in warp i mean it, it just takes how long it takes 
You know, I just don't really understand that. And the the thing that that really pissed me off was you know saying catering to RP nerds. It's it's not. It's got really nothing to do with role play elements. It's to do with game mechanics. I mean, if they made every jump one minute or two minutes, then this game would become very small very quickly. Um, and then all of a sudden you go, oh, I need to go. Oh, I've got this to do, and then I need to go to Hurston. But if I do all these things first, and then on my way to Hurston, you, it, 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 it makes the game bigger in scale. Whereas if you go, well, I can just nip back and forth to Hurston anytime I want, then all of a sudden you shrunk that game down to you yeah. know, five, six times smaller. And it just it makes no sense. So what, what you're saying is, is daft. But also, there's a brilliant um, comment here um, from... Harkonian, I salute you, sir. Uh, he says, uh, so the, the, the quote is, I'm not going to sit there and play for four minutes and stare at nothing. Sounds like this is not the game for you and you really aren't going to like how long it takes some ships to exit atmosphere on Hurston. Yeah, um, damn right. Yeah, I mean, I've sat in a ship and, and it's literally taken me 10 or 15 minutes to get out of the atmosphere, but it takes 10 or 15 minutes in that ship. It just does. What, what can yeah. you do, you know? They get used to it pretty quick. Um, yeah. A lot of these mechanics are going to be sort of sticking around. Yeah. And the other the other thing that kind of got me about this was the um, he's you know he's ragging on the the RP nerds as he calls them. Yeah. Because um, this is what they want. But what he, what he forgets is that a lot of those RP nerds initially funded this game and got yeah. it started. Exactly. You know, this isn't some, you know, like, <clears throat> fair enough. Uh, I can understand that um, CIG are going to look to broaden the scope of the game because they've realised that this is going to have a big appeal. But they, there is no way that they're going to cater to these casual gamers and, and start pandering to them, giving them all these little, you know, easy oh, outs that I'm they not. want. If they do, they'll lose all of the people who've spent thousands and thousands of pounds on this game or dollars or rupee or whatever you spend um, because what they wanted was a, a, a slightly more realistic simulation of space um, and you'll lose all that if you start bringing in all these C COD bloody players and stuff like that you just ruin it <laughs> yep. so, um, yeah if that just it won't happen they're not gonna they're not gonna change that kind of a um, <clears throat> game mechanic that is there to stay that second point I kind of agree with that because I don't know if you've seen any space film ever, but when they decide to go into some form of speed, there isn't a bloke sitting at a desk holding a button. He just pushes a throttle forwards and it goes faster. So don't really understand their thinking in making us hold down shift to um, to, to go faster, basically. Um, no, you, you don't. You I mean, oh, you, I... you hold it down to go to your top speed and then you can just let go. Oh, my freelancer doesn't. Really? It's a bug then. All right, fair enough. Okay, so we've answered your question, Dave Wizard. It's a bug that me and you share, annoyingly. I want to share nothing with you, but um, it is a bug that me and you share because, um, yeah, I have to hold down shift in order to afterburn. If I let go, it just slows me down. Very you, annoying. You sure you're not? turn in by like one degree that, no. that'll kick you out of it no no because it's yeah. still doing the it's it's very odd i'll have to play about with this but um yeah we'll have to see if, if anyone else has had that same issue put it in the comments because it'd be interesting to know if it's a bug and if it is we'll get it reported and make sure they know about it so uh, yeah also as far as i know <clears throat> about the um the flight model that's coming in 3.5 i believe yeah mm -hmm. um they're changing the whole way it works anyway so you can you just accelerate up to your top afterburn speed without pressing the afterburn button i think yeah that makes sense um so yeah it's all going to change anyway yeah so let's not worry too much about it but as no. far as your quantum travel to hurston goes just get used to it or find yeah. another game unfortunately um, suck it up yeah you don't fit in with us rp nerds <laughs> <laughs> there you go Okay, so next up we've got a post from Captain. It says, new consoles for spawning ships at Lawville. Uh, and there's quite an amusing picture of a couple of guys standing in front of some fruit machines. 
um, which I'm assuming is kind of pointing to the fact that it's a bit of a it's a bit of a lucky dip or a lottery whether or, <laughs> whether or not you're going to have ships to spawn or <laughs> I'm not a hundred percent sure on exactly what meaning he's got, but um, it is quite amusing nonetheless. It could be that, or he maybe he just wants to get some slot machines in the in the uh, spaceports. I didn't just think about that. Just a, just a personal need for slot machines. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I have that. If I could afford one, I'd have one in my room, you know? Yeah. Everyone deserves a slot machine. <laughs> um, yeah, I quite like it when you get these random posts where there's no agenda and no moaning. Everyone's just laughing about it, and it's it's nice. So <laughs> I thought we'd best slot that in after my rant. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that's quite a nice one. Um, so we'll move straight on from that. So next up, we've got a post from Annabelle Boo Huxley, which is a cool name. Um, and um, I'm assuming Boo's a nickname, but hey. Um, for perhaps the first time, the development felt like a real game last night. And this is quite long. There's lots of pictures. So obviously, go and have a read of the post. But the long and short of it is um, <clears throat> she, uh, I'm assuming, with the name Annabelle, uh, decided yeah. to go out and do some mining. Um, was looking for some Bexalite and heard basically that there was a, um, you know, uh, a, a moon aerial, I think it was. Um, so went over there, mined about 33,000 um, UEC of, of goods, um, and then basically made the treacherous journey back to Port Olisar. And, you know, after all the scary parts of that journey where things normally crash, managed to get there and sell her wares and made some money, you know. and. I like that. That is exactly what I can't wait for in this game is to just jump in and start doing some hauling and doing some, you know, just general long term um, goals that we have um, and just being able to do it, not have to worry and, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's the game. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Long way off, but um, posts like this, it's nice to have these posts every now and again that, um, Kind of highlight features that are in the game and how people are enjoying them. So it's, uh, it's it's nice. So I don't know. I'm looking forward to seeing all the other features get added to the game and people's sort of response to them. I guess. Yeah. So last up, we've got a post from Doctor Griffin, and uh, it says dollar exclamation mark equals dollar and i read that dollar dollar bills y'all dollar um, dollar bill y'all <laughs> something like that um so the the general idea behind this post is um is cig are basically bringing out more and more new ships um and these newer ships are slightly faster slightly more powerful you know slightly heavier gunned um and they are essentially making the the older ships that everyone bought as backers, you know, and spent all their money on, um, a little bit moot and kind of a little bit uh, underpowered now. And so the there's there's a, a definite power and feature creep coming into this game, and it's it's a little worrying. Um, you know, what what's what's your thoughts on this? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's right. Uh, there is a little bit of feature creep coming into the game now. We've seen that in the last few ships that have been uh, announced and released. The uh, amount of guns on them is getting more. The uh, gun sizes on them is getting higher. Um, yeah, um, they keep releasing new ships for money. Fair enough. Um, probably don't need. Uh, I don't know. It's a difficult one. Um, they need to keep getting funded to keep going. Yeah. Um, not like right away. I mean, the amount of money they've had now should keep them going for a while but uh, they do need a bit of funding still um, he suggested some other ways of getting getting some money um, like people actually just donating money rather than buying a ship type thing yeah. which yeah I mean I can see that one and maybe that is something COG could actually do maybe yeah so, it's a tricky subject but he's got a point yeah I think the problem with that side of things, with the donation of money now, is that because this game, uh, even though it's in pre-release, they've they've sold it. I think in theory they have to now um, take money for goods, sort of thing. Um, I'm not sure how legally where they'd stand in just taking um, donations. 
because that's what the Kickstarter was for and all that sort of stuff. So I think it's complicated. But, yeah, um, maybe. I think the, the the biggest problem with this game at the moment, um, with this particular side of it, this power creep and whatnot, is that um, you know, like anyone who's flying around now in an in an Aurora or like a 300i, like he says, um, are, are are at a massive disadvantage now to these new ships that are coming out because you're just going to get owned. There's no getting around it. Um, you know, when we first started flying our Auroras, we, we thought, oh, these are quite nice, and, you know, we shot things, pew pew, and it was fun. But now, if we come up against someone who's got one of the newer ships, we are just going to get ruined. Um, and yeah. it, it seems a bit mean, um, you know, to penalise people who years ago paid money um, and to kind of glorify all these new people who are spending a few hundred dollars on a ship now. And they're kind of getting all the benefits, so it's a little bit, it's a little bit lopsided, I think. Um, that's the biggest issue. But um, I suppose, there, like you said, there isn't much they can do. They need to keep interest in the game, and the only way to do that is to everything has to get bigger and grander. Um, if they just keep bringing out ships that are the same as the last ship, it, no one's going to buy it because how do you how do you price it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's tricky. Very yeah. tricky. The alien ships are the worst ones. Yeah, yeah. Those, I did look at a post and I almost chose it, but um, we're kind of you know running over now as it is. But um, they they are insanely priced, uh, and I know they're alien, so they're like special. But come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think the new uh, how do you say it? Santokyai or something? The actual proper way is. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you're fluent. In my native tongue, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that was like, it's nearly 200 quid. Mm. It's like, what? You could buy two cutlasses for that thing. Yeah, it's a bit ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's not even really all that. I mean, it's a cool ship and everything, but it's not super useful, if you know what I mean. Like, um, I don't no, know. I mean, they're just. It's just another fire. Yeah, you could easily buy like two freelancers, for example, for that money as well, and you'd have a ship that can do multiple things, you know. And it just seems, yeah, it seems like they're kind of like, like, like you know, like we said, they're they're focusing on on new players now, almost entirely. I don't feel like they're really even thinking about their, um, you know, their kind of legacy backers um, that much at all anymore. Um, they're just thinking, you know, dollar dollar bills, y'all. Well, only by bringing out. Ships like the Kraken that cost like a grand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's definitely your hardcore. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think um, I think they definitely need to address that. Though they need to really rethink. They're going to either have to, at some point, um, steady things up by taking all of the older ships and um, adjusting them in line. Um, not better or worse, but just just you know what you had in mind. Um, for that ship it needs to be that powerful again it can't just keep creeping down until eventually it's the equivalent of like a, a, a Ford Fiesta at a Lamborghini race you know um, well yeah problem is they're already started doing these remodels and reworks of ships yeah um, like the Aurora was like nearly a year ago now yeah and already it's starting to get pushed back again yeah it's, um yeah definitely gonna have to think of something because um I think eventually you're going to end up with a lot of people who are going to be pissed off at the the decisions they made two years three years ago um and everyone who's sort of the new the new breed of star citizen are just going to have a much better time of it yeah i mean there is the option to sort of upgrade your current ship uh, mm. to something better you know there is that argument yeah but then you shouldn't need to do that really um no start, start a ship's should literally just be for starting out and then when you get enough money get something else yeah but they still need to be capable of actually making that money up in the first place i guess yeah and i think the the thing is as well is you know if for example the game had been out for three years then fair enough it's like any vehicle it's it's aged it's lost some value whatever but technically this game isn't out so my ship should not be getting old you know no 
Um, I, my ship, when this game gets released fully, full release of this game, my ship should be as new as the day I bought it, um, and it should it should feel new. It shouldn't feel like a sluggish old piece of crap, you know. So, um, I really do hope that they can um, balance things out a bit. So, because um, I'm happy to buy a bunch more ships, but I don't want to have to. I want to want to. Yeah, that's the difference. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there you have it. That's the post for the week. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, like and subscribe for more Star Citizen content. Don't forget to leave some comments in the comment section below. Let us know what you think on the posts. Uh, if you've got any opinions, let us know. And um, as always, uh, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Goodbye.